Doc here with the Electric Force. Now around 1800, classical physics had these main laws of physics. F equals ma, Newton's second law. Newton's universal law of gravitation, where two masses attract each other by way of universal gravitation. And here, the electric force, where you can have charges of plus and minus, which then, if they're the same charges, they repel, and if they're unlikes, they attract. Now, we can look at this constant here of gravitation and this constant here of electricity, or the electric force, and then we can look at a property that matters endowed with called mass so that the experience of the gravitational force is possible. Similarly over here, since we have a new force, the electric force, we have a property of matter called charge. Now let's look at the concept of the field. The field concept is to look at a charge or a mass, say the mass of the earth or a charge, and if you put a test mass or a test charge in the vicinity, what will happen? Well, with gravity, it would come toward the Earth. It would come this way. The arrows would be the other way around. However, with the electric force, you can have both repulsion and attraction. Now, if the positive charge is placed here and the test charge is positive, you'll have repulsion, so the arrows go outward. So we write here, the way we do with gravity, you basically let the big M stand for the sun or for the earth, for example, and the little M is a ball on the earth. So then you write down F equals little m times G, where G is then the gravitational constant when you're on the earth, R is the radius of the earth, and since you don't change your height that much, we basically consider it a constant. However, in general, it varies as one over R squared. The same thing can be done with the electric force. You take the big Q, put it in the center, and have the little Q be the test, a particle or a charge. So therefore you have the electric field, analogous to the gravitational field, K, Q, big Q of R squared. And then the force is your little Q times E. Now we're going to put in vectors here. And since this vector points outward, we have a little cute r hat, which is a unit vector in the r direction. Your constant of electricity in the MKS system, the meter kilogram second system, is 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught. And this epsilon sub naught is the permittivity of free space, your constant. When you have more than one charge, you sum up the effects of the little charges, and each of these has their own little unit vector which is in a different direction depending on where the charge is from your line of view when you look at it. For the continuous distribution where you have a charge density rho, which is then some function of x, y, and z, then you find that you do an integral, you replace the qi's with delta q, and instead of summing we integrate, and here the r hats will vary depending on where the charge element is from your line of sight. You could include the r hat vector inside the integral since it will vary, or you can leave it outside. When I first studied calculus, we would always put the dq or the dx on the far right. However, with physics, we sometimes put things to the right that really need to be inside when we do our integration. Well, we're going to go off to do a problem in our next section to calculate the electric field for a finite line of charge.